Hey guys, today we're back with another base building video. We have Alex, one of the newest builders at Blueprint. He's going to be building us a Town Hall 14 Anti-3 ESL base. And he's going to be talking throughout and giving us some tips. Maybe you can learn a thing or two to build a base of your own. Alex is on voice with me. Hello, Alex. Hey, Hook. Thank you for having me today. Uh, pleasure is mine. Feel free to start building when you want. Um, but where do you start with a Town Hall 14 base? Yeah, all right. So before we get started, um, today I'll be building a Town Hall 14 ESL Antar 3 base. Um, I'll give you some basic tips and tricks you could use, and feel free to ask questions as we go along. Hope you enjoy. He's better at this than me, chat. He should be running the <laughs> channel. Come on, Alex, right. come get on camera and build it yourself. <laughs> All right, so when I do my builds, I usually start with a town hall compartment, as it is one of, if not the most important compartment. Um, and on this base, I'm going to have the single inferno with the town hall. I feel like that's what most people and as do you can these days. As you can see, I use buildings as a way to easily measure my compartments. So this is an easy trick you guys can use. As you can see, these are gaps right here. Chat, am I the only one that watches like a builder do their thing and they're so fast? They're literally so fast with like placing everything and I'm like, damn, I wish I was that fast. All right, so as you can see, I'm building a secured inferno compartment right here behind the town hall, which makes it easier to charge from like down here. And oh. here I'm going to have the CC. Should be. Any reason you've got the CC so deep in the base? No, I'll move it up. Um, usually you want to have the CC covering a bit of front of the town hall. That way it's easier to bait a Zui or a charge. So when the Queen, for example, is dealing with the town hall or the Inferno, it will be perfect timing for the CC to come out. Bang has just come into chat and said, I thought we were watching a time lapse with how quick you're dropping everything. It looks uh, like I'll... a time lapse. <laughs> Should no, I play that? No, no, no. Do it quick. It's really cool. It's uh, really cool. It shows that you, you know, you've done this a lot and you know exactly what you're doing. It's, it's part of the skill. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I like to use, as I said before, the buildings as a way to measure tiles. It's very easy. Um, I also have another trick you guys can use to find out if your buildings is reachable. Now, you can use the three wall trick, which is the basic way to find out if it's reachable from this wall, which it isn't. But another way you can you can do is use a skeleton trap. So if you actually put the skeleton trap right here in this compartment, we can see that the radius doesn't actually cover the inferno, and therefore it is not reachable. Same from this side. We can see that the radius doesn't touch, Therefore, it's not reachable. Now, if the wall foam was around here, we can see that the skeleton trap does cover the radius of the inferno, and it's therefore reachable. So this is an easy trick you guys can use to ensure that your key defenses are not reachable from other compartments. No actual way. <laughs> what the? I've never heard of that trick before. That's actually insane. I've well, never there you go. What the? Chat, how much easier has base building just got for lots of you? No actual way. Well, I'm <clears> going to be <throat> speechless for the next 15 minutes. Alright, so we've got um, a basic town of compartment right here. Obviously, when you're building a town of compartment, you need to make sure you have quite a bit of DPS around. And that comes from your expos and mainly cannons, as they do the most damage to your to enemy heroes or troops. So we're going to begin with building a skeleton. And a skeleton is basically just the walls and the key defenses. And then we'll go around and fill the base with the rest of the defenses. I like. Um, you've committed a lot of walls to this town or compartment. I feel like that's yeah, yeah. kind of normal. Do you like doing that generally? or? Not really. I don't usually fiddle too much with these outside walls right here. But I, saw, I thought I'd make it look a bit nice and creative today, so 
that's black. Like. All right, so I'm going to use this expert right here, and that is just going to measure basically a channel right here. Yeah. And I'm going to have a scatter compartment up at 3 o'clock. Might actually get rid of that channel. So, another good thing you guys should learn is a standard size for a scatter compartment is usually 13 by 13 tiles, and that way you get an extra two tiles per side to place your traps. So, I'll show you right here. As you can see, Six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen 12, 13 by 13. Um, that makes sense, chat, because then you have the scatter as three and then you have five either side, which means you have room for a building and then a two tile gap. That's it. Although the calculations. So something good. like this. With this wall right here, you can bring it in and make it a curve, but I don't usually like zigzags, so I'll just keep it like a square thing. From here, we can go ahead and work on the rest of the base. So we've got another two infernos, and we're going to work on the core of the base right now with a multi-inferno with a wall right here to make this inferno not reachable. Nice. How much emphasis do you put on the core multi-inferno? Obviously, that's something really common on anti-3 bases. Yeah, so with the best in the base, um, if we have one inferno tower, just like this, not usually much, it will be surrounded with other compartments. But for example, if you had two infernos with like a dead zone in the middle, then you would have, probably have other surrounding compartments to defend that. Yeah. Do you like those double core multi sort of setups or not really? I usually do them, but not as much as the single multi. Yeah. Like so. Um, we've got a question. When you start to build a base, do you have it as an almost ready picture in your head, or does it build up while you are putting stuff down? Um. So sometimes when I when I get an idea and I just like to try it, sometimes I just begin with a tunnel comp compartment and I just go off and see where it leads me. Yeah, laser girl, I'll say when I used to build uh, way back at Town Hall 13, I'd kind of like just uh, come up with an idea for like a Town Hall compartment um, and then go from there. Generally, if I had something ready set in my mind, it would be like a concept that I've seen from another build that's gone really well and I'm just trying to use it in a different way. Um, but other than that, um, it's kind of see as you go. I'm just going to try and fiddle around here and see what might work better. Yeah, that's fine. Take all your time. Yet again, chat, he's building this completely fresh. I know like a lot of, never on this channel from myself, but I know a lot of people generally when they stream building a base, they already have the base built and they literally just copy it onto it and talk about it. But I actually find it's quite a skill to build something live and you can literally see it's not like a constant process. <laughs> Like, you'll, you'll build a whole bunch of the base and then you'll move on to the next part. Um, and slowly so here I'm gonna... does it. Yep. Can... I'll demonstrate again to you guys the use of the skeleton trap. So as we can see, if I place it behind the walls here, it is obvious that the inferno is not reachable. Same from this side. The scatter shot is not reachable. So again, that's a simple way you guys can check for reachability. Yeah, laser girl, it is an interesting um, creative process base building. Of course, you spend hours building a base and then someone triples it with e-drags, but we'll ignore that part. Pretty Who's much. The builder? Uh, this is Alex. He's a new builder for Blueprint. 
as far as I know, the only like Australian builder. So it's nice to be hanging out with one of my own. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to do a double core inferno. Ooh. We get something crazy. All also, right. hey, Wake. Sorry I didn't say hi to you, man. Hope you're going well. Any reason you want the double core multi? Uh, because, I've, as you can see, I've put one on the right side of the base. And that leaves with empty space around here. Yeah. And if I do use this inferno around here and scatter here, it will leave empty space in the core. And I don't really want to do that, so probably the reason why. Chad, am I the only one looking at this? I'm like, we're going to super archer clone this base already. We're going to get all three infernos. <laughs> super archer clone, so strong. To be fair, though, not sure you'd do it. When am I becoming a builder after so many base building streams? I mean, I actually think CCL, if I wanted to, I could become a build again. Like, I understand the meta well enough. I do more Legends League stuff. I mean, I used to build Legends League bases and still could, but I, I learned that you put an insane amount of time into base building and a lot and of stress bad. for not much reward. The satisfaction was good for a while, but then I just got, kind of got sick of it. I could. I could be a builder, though. OP builder. Hey, look, I, I don't brag about many things, chat, but there is a reason box spaces are so common in Legends League. Unless you win Blueprint and you get filthy rich. Well, unless you're going to pay me like 30 bucks a base, it's not worth it, and no one in their right mind is going to spend 30 bucks on a base from me. Alright, so... On the 9 o'clock side of the base here, I'm going to do a scatter compartment. And with the core inferno and probably the eagle up around this side. Yep. Base is just slowly but surely coming together. Yep. Again, I'm using the two-tile gap in front of my scatter shots to leave space for testers and giant bombs to bait suies. Mm-hmm. A newbie builder can perhaps come up with a weird and hopefully good base without knowing any of it. I mean, yeah. Um, honestly, though, Laser Girl, a lot of the times the bases I struggle with a lot on Legends League are like day one bases, which are terrible bases, but they're just not something I'm used to seeing, right? And like the same can go for anti-3 bases. You can build the best base ever and it makes absolutely no sense. Um, uh, like, obviously the pros are... The pro base builders are pros for a reason, and they're more likely to build a great base than one of us. But, like, a lot of base building can just come down to luck. Like, what your, what your base gets attacked with, sort of thing. Like, just things outside your control. Okay, welcome to the chat, Shide. Of course, you start with a message like that. What did you say? Uh, bro, Alex sounds so hot. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to the core multi, and I'm going to start restru like structuring my eagle compartment right here. Alex is my homie in it. <laughs> I'm sure he is, Shide. For sure. So we don't get a lot of space here, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a dead zone right here, move the inferno down, and just move the entire upside down. Yep. That's one of the benefits of uh, dead zones, 
is that you can use it to actually reduce the width of a base. Yeah, so dead zones, I could explain real quick. Um, as you can see here, we have a dead zone right this side, a dead zone right here, and here. And a dead zone is basically an empty space where you can have two compartments on either side. And it is not able, and you can't basically reach key defenses from each compartment. It does cost walls, but it's usually worth it. Um, chat, we've also got in-game sound now. Or at least we had it for a second, we don't anymore. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we have in-game sound. You're the first builder to ever bring us in-game sound. Not that it's particularly you music as well? interesting. The in-game music? Uh, I'm happy with just in-game sound. Honestly, right. like, I could play my own music in the background now if we wanted, but I prefer listening to you. In-game music oh. OP. Oh, I, I don't know how much more I could listen to that. Uh, so, genuine question. At what point does it do you have too many dead zones? Because there is a point, right, where you get to having too many dead zones. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have, like, a compact base and the buildings are quite close to each other, and that's when you probably have too many dead zones, if the base is more spread out, the compartments are spread out, you're most likely to have less dead zones. I find a lot of bases that have like too many dead zones, it, it gets easy to wall break the dead zones because that's one of the other real benefits of it is you can't wall break a dead zone because there's no building inside it. But if a base has so many dead zones, the wall breaker's got like nothing else to target. So it has to mm -hmm. target the dead zone. That's like the most satisfying thing for me in Clash. It's like yeah, for sure, for sure. all that effort into a dead zone only, only for it to me allow the wall break anyway. Can you ask Alex yeah. what made him start base building? Sure. Um, so basically it was at the end of Final 13 and I used to copy YouTube bases and I was like, how do you build a base? So I was like, let me try this for myself and it turned out really horribly. Mm -hmm. And then I came around at the time a professional builder who I got close with and he helped me start. But I basically self learned most of the way. Do we get a name for this professional builder? Yes, so it is actually Andrew, who was the ex Bayless builder for Space Station Gaming. Yeah, no, he was pretty handy. Yes. So I'm just creating like I've basically got the eagle compartment up here and a bunch of outside walls to make it harder to get into the base. Bro, he is a plank, but I love him. What the? He's talking about Andrew, by the way. I think. What is a plank? What is what does that even mean, Shide? Oh, you're switching the base around. Where, is there anything you're really looking for? Sometimes I just don't like the way the base looks, and I like to give it rotations and see which like which the, which way I like the most. Which way do you like the most? Mm, I'm thinking between this or the original. I like the town hall at three, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, I just what do you tell said. <laughs> like a plum or a melon? Oh my god, okay. Oh, I feel like this way it would be very easy to spam drags from here and blame town hall. And I want to kind of prevent that. So, hence, I'm going to rotate. That's some of the skill you guys don't really understand in base building. It's like, we're flipping the base around to make it harder to spam from technically the same spot, but you're using your hands in a different spot. I don't know. Yeah, so you like just have to think backwards and like think how the attack might come in. Like if you're right-handed, left-handed, things like that. Let me just think real quick what I don't like. Take your time. The base building streams are relaxing to watch. I know. It's like a, it's, it's a Clash of Clans version of ASMR. <laughs> Some sceneries have their own sound. That's true. 
But I'm not sure, if, isn't that just in main base, not in the war base? Shide, if I have time, I might start again. But I'm also so far behind the meta on Legends League base building, it's so wonky at the moment. But I'd love to. I could start pumping out some box spaces again. I still got plenty of ideas for what style of box space I'd build. I just don't have the time. My poor viewers on my YouTube channel, they haven't got a Legends League ba box base link in like a year. I swear that was why half the people came to my channel is because I'd build a new insane box space once a month and they'd steal it after it defends like Garku stars and the rest. But oh well. Any questions feel free to ask while I do this. I mean I haven't gotten I haven't got too many. We'll see if chat comes up with any. I'm just curiously watching. Why'd you close that wall? That one you just did. Alright, so I thought of possibly Queen Judge Hydra with a queen coming into the eagle and possibly try to wall break right here. Yeah. And I open this, that way that there's a chance the queen can walk down and avoid this wall break. Yeah. Or if he wants to bring a jump, the chance the queen walks down. But like the outside wall there. Ah, uh, okay, just... okay. Is there a reason? Because obviously it makes okay, it easier to wall break. It is easier to wall break into here. Yep. That means it'd have to invest in another wall break on the front. Okay. Interesting. Let me just see. In fact... I want to leave the multi open. Maybe. <laughs> so many micro decisions chat there's about like a thousand <laughs> micro decisions in each base build and like each with the each with the chance to make the base completely different to like a certain style of attack it's actually nuts how many judgment calls you have to make but that's where the skill comes from all right i think we should start Place in the experts for now, and if there's something I don't like, I'll come back. Easy peasy. Do you have slash keep a picture gallery of all the bases you've built? Um, I do have my private Discord vault where I put my bases, but I don't really use it anymore unless I have to. Chat. Now we all know what we have to do. We're gonna spam Alex for the the Discord uh, invite link, obviously. Hey, Harmless, how are you? Welcome to Strone, buddy. Okay, the next thing is to find a good spot for this expo here. Expos are tough because you don't want them reachable from the outside. You also don't want them too close to other point defenses. Yep. What's your normal approach with expos? Like, the one I see the most is three ground, one air, or two, two. Do you have a particular preference? Yeah, so I'm between 2-2 two, two or 1-A. You really like to have A on the eagle compartment to avoid a drag rider snipe the eagle. That's yep. mainly the only reason why. And if I do have a an error expo, like I do here, with this wall, I usually like to have it on air in case they try to funnel with air troops. But if I didn't have this and the expo was in here, it would be on ground. Mind me, chat. Apparently, I've just gotten tired all at once. Okay, so when you're placing the buildings down, you want to start with the expos. Of course, after the multis and scatters. And then you move on to air defenses and wizard towers. And when you're placing down your wizard towers, you want to make sure that you cover good base, good value. But make sure that you're not giving the attacker too much freeze value, like here. As you can see, you can freeze the breath of the scatter and there was a tower. So we could place it around here somewhere. So are you that worried about bad attacks these days? 
not so much bad attacks, but for example, Lolo attacks. And if they come in with the Lolo, and they can just simply freeze the freeze here. So just try to make it as hard as possible for the attacker. Have you got a timer for how long the build has taken so far? So I've been recording 26 minutes, but that probably yes, includes... Yes, I'm taking like... my time. Yeah, no, that's fine. Take the time <laughs> you need. But that probably in includes like a bit of fluff at the start where I kept messing, messing up the intro. <laughs> Stream idea. After a base has been built, have folks try to attack it with different armies? Oh, so have the stream test the base. It's not a bad idea, but if you're going to run it... Like, imagine there's a few people in competitive teams in stream, and then you try and run it. You, you'd probably have to do that... For, you could probably only do that for, like, a Legends League base, because... You know, it's just random who finds you in Ledger League. But that'd be heaps of fun. Only downside is you have to wait, like, 24 hours. But I could do that. Have someone mm -hmm. on and then just stream, like, an hour the next day and we all test it together. Yeah. To people on YouTube listening, let me know if that's a good idea. If you've made it this far. Alright, the next important thing is the heroes. So, so we have the Arch Queen and the World Champion. And you want to have them opposite each other to make it harder for the attacker to take them both out at the same time. Gen so you usually like to have... Yep. S sorry, would it make more sense to have like the RC next to a multi-inferno? Like switch them? Like you, because obviously when you've got the queen, you've got yep. to worry about Zap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? For sure. Well, are you more, what are you more worried about? Like queen next to a scatter or queen next to a core multi? A queen next to a core multi is more worrying for sure because they're more, more likely to zap a multi than a scatter. The RC's just got a little more health. How do you place the warden since it gives a HP buff? What's that? How, what's your philosophy of around where you place the warden. Do you try and like maximize the health buff it gives to heroes and defenses CC or not really? Yeah, so either, either around the town hall compartment, which is around the CC, or around the enemy queen, or around the eagle, basically. Depending on the base. This base is a little hard to place the enemy heroes, I mean the enemy queen on this side, due to this dead zone. So the queen is a little bit exposed here. But that shouldn't be much of a problem. Chat, if I had to guess, I have a feeling that that exposed queen is going to have a, a certain Tesla farm there. <laughs> we'll see what else. Alright, so we've there. got our exposed down for now. Um, still with the towers. So as you can see, I've got all my wizard towers down, and none of them I'm giving away with much freeze value. However, they are still effective. Notice how none of them are in range of an air defense chat, so they will be shooting balloons rather than yep. lava hounds. Next thing I'll do is I'll start working on the tower compartment and filling in storages. So an important thing to know about storages is that in front of the tunnel, they're mainly for tanking the heroes to deal DPS or to stop sneaky goblin blimps. So here, if they do a sneaky goblin blimp, they're probably going to come in from here to try lower CC. Or maybe like from here, if they really want. So I'm going to put a storage around there. Like so. How many builder huts do you put by the town hall? Usually from one to three. Depends. And I usually like to have one between each scanner and multi. And one in the eagle. Brilliant. 
Brandon, are you talking about at six o'clock? What he did with the air defense? Just so I know when I ask. What's that? Um, he's asking at six o'clock you've got the storages behind the air defense. Is mm -hmm. there a reason you don't have like the storages protecting the air defense? Okay, so my fear with the air defense being right here and the storage is being there, as I said before, for sneaky goblins, possibly going in from here up to the town hall, meaning they have to deal with this and that. Yeah. And for the air defense, if I put the air defense like here, for example, this makes it very easy for a lot of the town hall. However, if I place it at six, and if the lava hound comes from this side or that side, I can use a Sam or two right here. On the way, it's most likely going to die using the Sam before it goes through. Hope that answers. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good answer. Brandon, essentially, <coughs> nine times out of ten on bases, you'll have the tornado behind the town hall to stop clone value and also, you know blizzards or super archer sh nonsense but if if you try and lalo through the town hall and the, there's a clone behind it your lalo is almost certainly dead so people try and use the lava hound to obviously tank the nato um because if the lava hound does that the lalo has it pretty easy so having the air defense so far offset there like have a look at it how will the lava hound go behind the town hall it just simply can't right So obviously an air defense like that is nicer for queen charge attacks, but I mean, the mm -hmm. easy way to stop queen charge hits down there is to make that town hall as unchargeable as possible. And I feel like this base has done that already. Like that town hall, if I'm hitting this in Legends with queen charge Lalo, I am not charging that town hall. It looks disgusting. All right, so the next thing is sweepers. And I'll explain why I've got them covered like this. So on this one right here, this sweeper is facing the 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock side, and this is the opposite. And I don't really tend to use the sweepers facing town hall anymore. And the reason being, they face less charges in the town hall and more dragon spam from one of these angles. Or possibly here. Or even lower. So... With the sweeper being facing this side, the attacker ha either has to zap this, invest two zaps, or go against it. Same with this side. Chat, you'll very rarely see an air spam hit go straight into an eagle if it's opposite the town hall. They normally like go in on a side with the eagle, so like the once the dragons or e drags spread, they get it. But yeah. Yeah, the sweepers are much better off covering like the sides, if that makes sense. And there's no need to have a sweeper to cover the town hall, because generally you just make the town hall very unpleasant to charge anyway. And you know an air spam oh. hit's not coming in there. Sorry. Are you good? Um, so if they were to do a spam attack, for example, from this side, they would place the drags from here, and do an overblimp with a clone bomb for the town hall, and heroes from 3 o'clock up into the eagle. The RFC as well. Same from this side. If these use air drag from here, clone bomb heroes up into the eagle. So it's one of two sides, and we have to decide which one is more likely that they might do. And we would put the traps on the back end of the base to hurt the heroes. Pretty obvious chat. You don't want to try and trap the side that you're immediately going into because they're warden abilitating immediately and running into a tesla farm whilst they're in the warden just adds value <laughs> all right um... okay i'm i'm maybe five years old chat <coughs> maybe five years old Oh, you're changing up the compartment quite a lot here. Is there any reason? I'm just seeing how I can use my walls more effectively. Okay, it should be fine. I'm going to try to use my walls elsewhere. How 
How much thought do you put towards Warbreaker AI when building? Um, not so much because I use open walls to try and avoid obvious wall breaks. Of course, you can wall break right here if you place wall break from here. Same with each side. But generally, I like to have my compartments open just to mess with heroes, you know. Um, by use of Teslas, you can make them walk and things like that. And on this space, there's not really much places you can wall break unless you really do a smart wall break, like guys wall breaks, or maybe up here somewhere. But that's probably about it, as much as I can see. I think actually, technically, you can wall break any wall on the outside of this space. Yeah. Because there's just not a. This is, like I said, chat, that's the one downside of dead zones is that the wall breakers have nothing to target. So. You can probably wall break every outside wall on this base if you wanted to, but you can't get any wall breaks further than that. Mm -hmm. um, Hence why I've left this wall open right here. And that's also for anti-wall break. Uh, Brandon, I can probably answer that for you. Mortars aren't used to ruin Lalo pathing anymore, like into air defenses. They're used to stop flame flingers. Yep, we'll get to if that. If you really want to use the defense to hurt Lalo pathing on the outside of the base, it's a cannon these days. But you don't see it as much as you used to. Because you also need the cannons for DPS. Long gone are the days where the mortar is useless. The flame flinger actually brought it back into the game. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the expo on one side and the mortar on the other side. And this is for flare flinger as well. So if they do play from the right side, there's an expo. Yeah, there's a mortar. So this is basically preventable from a flare flinger, unless they really force it. But yeah, it's gender Y, opposite each other. You don't want to have a mortar and an expo on the same side, because that way you can tank both of them at the same time. I'm just going to start filling in the rest of the base and... So as you can see, you want to try and spread all your defenses around as evenly as possible to cover as much area of the base as possible. So as you can see with arch towers, you want to make sure they cover all around the base as evenly as possible. Um, we, we've had Psy appear in chat. <laughs> Oh no. What's he saying? WTF, Big Alex. <laughs> Sai is also OP base builder. From his coach. Yeah, I don't think Sai is an OP base builder. Rip. Need Alex face cam. Isn't that true, Mr. A? It'll be in the thumbnail, so don't worry. Um, interesting spot for a bomb tower on the outside of the base. That's not something you see too often because of blizzard attacks. Mm -hmm. Well, on this base, to be honest, I don't usually use many bomb towers around my town hall. Like here, they can only they can only get the town hall. They can't really get CC. Yeah. Um, bomb towers I like to use more maybe for hybrid or to hurt Suez. But if there is an obvious spot for a blizzard, then you could use it as well, correct? Yeah. Like here would be a good spot if they yeah, do hide it from the side. And that... boom. Exactly what I was thinking right there. Um, if you, if you do see any like faults or any things you have concerns about or interest, if you could ask. Um, yeah. I don't think Sai's too happy. I didn't say he was a good base builder. Uh, Sai is never happy. Ain't that a fact? 
Chat, get this. I was at DreamHack Melbourne last weekend. Do you know who wasn't at DreamHack Melbourne? Any clasher in Melbourne that could have wanted to meet me. Blame Alex? Why should I blame Alex for that sigh? You're all literally commenting on my Twitter post, but not one of the comments said, hey, let's go. You told us the night before I was going out. Usually my bases are a little bit more creative, but I haven't built in a week. So... That's okay. I'm doing my best right now. Okay, another thing I'd like to talk about is cannons. And I like to use my cannons to protect these two key defenses and her Sui attack as well. So you'll see me place a lot of them outside. Nice chat. Any logic behind placing storage? Which ones? Like, most of them are just used to either stop sneakies for the town hall or to hurt Sui heroes. Yeah, that's mainly why. As you can see in the core here, if you do use core storages, you want to make sure that they are not one tile spaced to avoid high chain value from E-Drags. So as you can see, I've got most of my things, like, two tiles. Trash buildings, I like to place my campfires at every one in each corner. And I like to use my barracks in spots where I don't like or I don't want the attack of the final. Or use a sneaky open. Like here. Yeah. If I put a drill, for example, they can find this. So if you use for example barracks or non sneaky opens buildings, then it's harder to invest. Makes sense, chat. Can you ask Alex to invest in a better mic? <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> Send some dollars and we can make that happen. ASMR Alex. His voice isn't pleasant to listen to, though. Oof. Oof. Who said this? Uh, guess. <laughs> so. It's quite late and I'm trying to speak quietly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it was Laser Girl. It was. I'll talk about a bit more on my stream on Sunday at this sort of time if you're in there. I'm just going to like place my trap place. buildings, trash buildings, if you have any questions for me to ask. Well, yeah, someone's asked about Teslas. What are you, what's your main goal with Teslas? Yeah, so we'll get to that soon. Um, my main thing with Teslas is to basically stop heroes, either in sewers or back end for spam attacks. Especially for ESL Wars, where the slightly more competitive players uh, who have more experience usually tend to do more sui attacks, for example, with Lalas and things like that. So that's probably the, my main priority to stop. Usually I like to spread out my trash buildings two tiles apart for chain value just to make it harder to you know, get things down and for filing purposes but if I do have extra buildings at the end I always go back and have two together for example that's still two tiles spaced away from other buildings like so. Um, one sec, the quality of the video has just dropped. Mm -hmm. Chat, it hasn't always been this bad, yeah? I literally looked away for 10 seconds at my phone to deal with 10 Discord notifications. Okay, I'm gonna leave and rejoin. One second. Okay, I'll pause. Well, that looks way better. That looks way better, right, chat? 
continue. Okay. Sometimes I go back to the end and rotate the base after everything is done. In case I'm on like a different style. Is there anything you're looking to place behind the eagle? To be honest, I don't really have much because usually I'd have the king or warden or build the huts. But in this case, I want my king to be as exposed to the outside. That way, you can hurt heroes coming down more. Yep. As I can see, it being more effective than being all the way down here with a dragon skin for it. For now. Okay, so as you can see, we've got quite a bit of trash to spare. So I'm just gonna go. Tower here. We put that there. So yeah, we're pretty much done with the layout. I can yep. find the place. Uh, one second walls. scoping. All in. Yeah, same laser. Same. I, as Every time we get some builder on to build, I'm sitting here like, hmm, how would I hit this with Queen at Charge Lalo? How would you? Uh, I actually do have a plan. Queen 12 to 11... And go, or oh, just charge that multi comp at 10 30. I don't know if I'd go from the top or from 9 o'clock, but charge that multi. And if you can wall break that CC, which I don't know if it's possible, I don't know what the wall breaker range would make it. Mm. I think you could get your queen into that multi um, and you wall break that CC and you get everything. Down here. Yeah. But I don't know if okay. you can get that wall break. I don't know. And getting the queen into the multi is going to be so much fun. I think One snipping more top eagle air defense. What do you mean snipping? Sniping. Sniping. Top eagle air defense. Sorry. Please, let's not talk about haircuts. <laughs> Which rotation do you like the most? This. This? Yeah. This is not bad, to be honest. Because then you're pretty sure they're going to come from 7 o'clock. Yeah. I'm just looking to make sure everything evenly spread. DPS spread evenly everywhere. Chat, we haven't even moved on to traps. Um, how are we looking for time? Uh, look, we're at 56 minutes. If, if This will go on YouTube. This will just be seriously condensed. I'll probably just fast forward during all the dead time. That's why I haven't been talking much the last 10 minutes. Because I'm just mm -hmm. going to fast forward it. But I might just mute it during the fast forwarding. So that's fine. Oh, good. Okay, we can move on to traps. Um, start with the red air bombs. I mainly use them to kill boons from CC booms, like clone bombs. As well as you can use them in the core <clears throat> for Lalo. So, looking at the space, they're most likely to come in with drags from here, as it is an easier path. path. And coming in into this site, as there's probably a chance they'll split everywhere. Therefore, 
I'm going to use my traps to the farm right here. As the heroes walk around and finish over here. All the attack I might decide to do is Sui with King and Arcee there and the Queen for Town Hall. From Lala. Chat, did I not call it like 55 minutes ago that the Tesla farm would be by the Queen? Okay. So they'll boom from this side, so we can use a NATO right here. <clears throat> um, one sec, I'm going to leave and rejoin. Discord's having a great time. Oh. Yeah, Discord's having such a great time, I can't even leave. <laughs> Chat, that looks better, yeah? Yeah, it does. I couldn't even leave. Huh. Continue. Okay. Sams, you want to use your Sams basically at air defenses? One to and two sorry. at least. And you were using the NATO on the left side because you think that's where the spam entry is going to come from and you're trying to stop the clone getting the single inferno? Well, I'm trying to minimize as much value that the clone blimp can get. But yeah. Sometimes it can be hard to stop the single, as the single <clears throat> is quite close. But if the single was further away, like yeah, it's easier to stop it from getting down. Sam's I like to eternal in case they do a sneaky blimp or other hand. <clears throat> Unless they do the uh, um RVNT blimp. I like to eagle, also for hounds. The rest you can spread around the core for air for drags. Near the queen. We'll keep one there. Also, a big thing about building you, after you build a base, you should would definitely recommend testing the base and just feeling around with the traps. That way, you can get exact, you know, true pathing. And you can you can know exactly where you should trap and place your traps. Set around. I'm gonna use the Teslas here. At three o'clock. Just stop assuming. So as you can see, I'm using a combination of skeletons, giant bombs, and Teslas to heavily bait this area. Yep, good luck sending a Sui into their chat. And yeah, Lazar was thinking that. No. Is investing a Sam or two where you think a funneling troop might be worth it? Or should um, they be invested inside the base? I don't really do that because it's um, a win or lose situation. You never know. You can't really predict it. I'd prefer to use it at air defenses or in the core where it's more likely to happen. Yeah, I feel like you don't see that many baby drags used on funnels as well, Brandon. It's not the most favoured troop. Yeah, not anymore, at least. Something like this. For spring traps, you want to have them between one tile gaps in between buildings, or you know, hybrid hogs, or it can also be used for headhunters.
So the reason I've used my headhunters over at this side like that is in case they do a lot of here and they use the headhunters possibly from one of these angles. Um, basically, this is this is the base for now. Feel free to test, change anything you want to modify. All up to you. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed. Any questions, feel free to ask. Base looks pretty good to me. Well done on the build, Alex. It's, it looks really nice. So that looks toxic to hit. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Um, just keep it up there and we can get the nice screenshot. I'll actually ask you to send me the base link as well in a minute, but uh, we can do that after stream. But yeah, chat, what do you think of that base? Because that looks toxic. I don't want to touch that base. Um, are you are you happy with it, Alex? Yeah. Um, until, I, you know, you can test it. Find where some weaknesses you can tweak. Um, the link will be out on the YouTube and Twitter. Make sure you copy it. it. Um, make sure you use code blue, subscribe and leave a like and see you in the next one.